8 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Got a bunch of people jumping in. I usually do these streams midday. Well, but we still get some of the usual suspects here. Look at all these nerds and jerks and meat eating, Gaia slaying, <laughs> hate mongers in the uh, in the comments here. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Our la our last stream was a lot of fun yesterday, huh? Did a stream yesterday afternoon. Talked all about how we need to. Uh, just continue this drive to censor all speech online. That all speech needs to be policed. Uh, fun little stream. But it's election day, you guys. It's election day. And this is officially the stream to make America steak again. This is the election special to heal America. Right? In a country so divided and so fractured. Where the media is just constantly trying to help us to get out of the pit that we've dug ourselves, right? I mean, these saints in the, in the media are telling us every day all the real problems in the world, and today's the day we get to go out and we get a vote. And when we do vote, you know what, what, what we get? We get a freaking sticker to tell people that we voted. And you know what we get to do with that sticker? We get to take a picture of it and virtue signal and post pictures online of the sticker that we received for voting. So I really hope you guys are all out there voting with your forks and your knives to make America steak again. What's up, guys? Hollywood Fred, Diego Go. If you guys have things you want me to read, super chats or whatever, or if you got if, if you got things, you get, comments you want me to read, questions or whatever, uh, you can leave the super chats and I will answer the question. Um, all right. So... Make America steak again, guys. This country needs to heal. And sometimes music can be really, really helpful for that. Um, so I, I brought to this potluck um, some vegan-friendly music just to play and kind of hopefully we can all, can all vibe. Rainbow Spirit Organ. There's a spirit bringing people together. And music is the key. Woo! Mm. Look at these beautiful Native Americans. These beautiful Native people. They're celebrating their freedom. Singing to the spirits of the forest. High as fuck on acid. The song of healing, folks. We're gonna heal this planet. One veggie burger at a time. One meat eater at a time. One vasectomy at a time. So the key, guys. Music is the key. But you know what? There is actually another key as well. Really? Hey, relax. My dog's barking at himself in the, his own reflection. Chill out, buddy. Your music might be one of the keys, but I think there's another key, guys. And it's been pointed out to me that the problem with America, it's not... I mean, we all thought that well, the media tells us really, really effectively what the problems are. But there's one that they haven't figured out quite yet. Um, but some of our friendly YouTube community, some fellow members of uh, the YouTube community here, as, as they call themselves on YouTube, the creators. One of these creators on YouTube. Hey, ribeye, come here. That's you. That's your own face. That's your own face, dude. Come here. Hey, come here. Come relax. Ribeye figured out the problem, <laughs> and so did this guy. The problem with America is me, you guys. It's me. I have to be stopped. Look at this beautiful, first of all, check out this feed, right? Like, 
just obviously guy working his butt off really working very very hard to just give you guys really valuable content uh content like taking my three and a half hour live stream and live streaming him watching my three and a half hour live stream and somehow making it four hours and ten minutes so that's impressive um he must have uh must have really ripped into me there but we're going to check out this amazing piece of journalism here uh, with, which features my face, uh, photoshopped, and it says, Stop this evil. Vegans, an opportunity to stop the carnal meat. What is it? The opportunity to stop the carnal meat psychopath trend. Caring and being able to empathize with other people. They just don't have that part of the brain. Why do so many people question your temperament? They don't Look, know he, if it's he, Madison he puts me on the cover and then he, he starts just talking about Trump, <laughs> which is funny. Bill Trump Bill hates vegans, Bill you guys. Who is abusive to women. Dude. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Did you hear him criticize that innocent, beautiful, saint, saintly man that's a vegan? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, who is abusive to women. What? Ab Bill Clinton? Bill Clinton's amazing. This disgusting man has me sh literally shaking right now. I wow. You've called women you don't like fat pigs. Calls dogs. women names. Whatever. So this video with me on the cover, it's all about Donald Trump for some reason. This guy's like obsessed with Trump, I guess. Even psychiatrists are saying that he has classic psychopathic personality. You can tell them to go themselves. I don't Fast like forward. Culturally, and then, and then he puts, he puts Alex, weak, Alex Jones talking about. Diabetes. I guess Alex this Jones is unhinged lunatic. Alex Jones is anti-vegetarian. Look at Trump eating meat. People that eat vegetarian diets culturally are shriveled, are weak, are stupid. Anti-vegan, Alex Jones. Vegetarian diets give you cancer. Stupid. And the truth. But, and the look, truth. All right, look. So. He's got me on the cover. He hasn't even put me in the video yet, but he's talking about so Trump listens to Alex Jones, okay? This is the best part, guys. This is the funniest part. So, like, a few months ago, there was this hoax that started on, like, I don't know. This must have started from, like, 4chan or something. Uh, the AOK -OK sign. Like, the AOK -OK sign. People were saying that if you, you know, if you touch your finger, your forefinger and your thumb together, apparently that means something horrible and racist and it's like they got these people got trolled and uh they were told by someone online that this means like some white power thing <laughs> so this guy's this guy's got in his video he's say check it out a white supremacist administration look at the w stands for white and the p stands for power you guys look at that woman she's a white supremacist <laughs> That lady's like that, trying to like genocide every. Look at that. Just throwing her I'm gang sign up. Look at that thug in front of everybody. About... He's actually close to being the most powerful. Okay, so Trump bad. Of my. Where's why is why is my face on the front on the front of this video? Let's find the way he he's even... has treated so many people. Okay. So many lies. Trump, you're horrible. Like I've been saying, meat eating and Republicans. Go together. Ooh. They're selfish people. They don't care about selfish. animals. They don't care about people there either. They just want to use animals and people and the environment for their own gain. He's dropping science, guys. One the point. reason the Republicans who got in the way of Obamacare being what it Okay, so he's talking about his political... I'm still trying to find what this has to do with my people face. Like this was on the cover. Shut down quick. And we didn't do that. And now we have this big problem. Even if he doesn't become president, he's already been heard by so many people, and he's polluted people's minds. He brought out this yeah. fringe group of crummy, deplorable people. Look, Sean Baker! Sean Baker, you're a white supremacist and a deplorable. Oh my goodness. Is Trump pro Sean Baker? I hope not. Oh my goodness. I'm just so glad that we could do this election special, and because I'm so open to you know, changing my opinion. Uh, and this man has really, <laughs> he's really changed mine. I understand now that Sean Baker is the problem and Trump. And I guess like Alex Jones, <laughs> those are the problems. Check it out. I'll have a big voice. 
Oh. Oh, snap. Look at his fingers. Do you guys see his hands? Oh, what? <laughs> I didn't even realize. Look at that. Guilty as charged. Look. This. These are the people. Oh, my goodness. Look, that. <gasps> okay. And that. That was... <laughs> there you go. So there's, that's his thesis. I, me and Sean Baker, I guess, are so just so terrible. So there's horrible, horrible, naughty, naughty people. <laughs> Pretty funny, right? And he's got a bunch of other videos about me, but I don't, I don't know how willing I am to watch him. He's got my picture on a lot of videos. Anyways, shout out to to Vegan Carburetor, just hard hitting journalism there. Stop this evil. I have to be stopped to heal America, guys. You gotta get rid of those evil meat eaters. That's funny, right? Um, uh, so I was, I was checking out, you know, of course, uh, YouTube throwing up in the, uh, in the suggested videos. Throwing up good old vegan propaganda. You know, I wouldn't have expected this, actually, so soon. Well, you've got Rick Roll here who talks a lot about you know, sustainability, the environment, being healthy, healthy food. And he's talking to this guy from this clean meat company. I think this is a really interesting podcast, and I suggest everybody check it out. Uh, shout out to Rick Roll for being uh, you know, uh, a, a big proponent of uh, big business. This clean meat movement is uh, now hijacking some of these uh, you know, major proponents of vegan diets and using them to push that processed food agenda. Creating these foods, are we moving from tissue engineering to make something that biomimics meat? Uh, food supply, there is a. Well, you have to understand, I don't know, brewing? Well, like, what do you need to understand to really wrap your head around what clean meat is and what is going on and how we're going to innovate this future? Well, it's not super hard to understand at sort of a, a basic level, uh -huh. but as with any sort of production scale, uh, food supply, there is a tremendous amount uh, that you need to understand about sort of each sector. So, you know, for plant-based meat, we need to be doing crop optimization and we need to figure out, you know, what are the proteins that are going to be uh, best turned into plant-based meat? Mm -hmm. And we need to figure out what that looks like. Then we need to look at, figure out, you know, how you put all these things together in order to make something that biomimics meat. And you need to figure out what the production technology is going to be. Um, it's really sort of fascinating to us. Um, when we first started looking at plant-based meat and clean meat, we sort of thought we had plant-based meat figured out because there are a bunch of companies doing it, and clean meat was going to be really complex and difficult uh, because nobody essentially was doing it. Memphis Meats was just getting started. Right. Uh, there was Super Meat and Mosa Meats just getting started. Mm -hmm. None of the three of them had incorporated. Uh, but what we found is that the plant-based meat is actually a lot more complex than the clean meat because clean meat, we've got cross-applicability from therapeutics, from tissue engineering. So everything happening in George Church's lab at Harvard Medical School, you could just like sort of take all of that and say, okay, we're going to do food now. Okay, so you know, all these medical experiments of growing tissue cultures, growing organs for people, um, stuff like that they're talking about. You just transfer the technology and we start growing you food. Um, now, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't trust this clean meat shit for one minute, and I'll never put this stuff on my body. Who knows what the hell is being engineered into these products by these massive companies? And when you look at the investment profile of, um, of a lot of the people that are investing in this stuff, it's just it's wild. So this guy, uh, yeah, Bruce Friedrich, um, I mean, thinks he's doing a good thing, right? So easy to, it's really easy to distract ourselves with, uh, with uh, seeking fame and fortunes. Uh, and tell ourselves that what, are, what we're doing is righteous. So he's just some lobbyist in Washington, D.C. Uh, who knows if he's a true believer or not and what he's actually doing. But this whole push for clean meat, they call it clean meat. You know, the propaganda term is there. The Orwellian doublespeak is there. Clean meat. As if somehow growing meat in a lab is cleaner than breeding animals and using animal husbandry like we've used for thousands of years. Um, so... Interesting conversation here with with Rich with Rich Roll and man I gotta say it's kind of it's it's sad to see like these idols of the vegan movement just reveal how little integrity they actually have uh, intellectually 
right? I mean, I'm sure Rich thinks this is a great thing. I'm sure he's obviously not saying, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get all rich off of this clean meat crap." No, he's you know he's he's already a rich guy. Lives in Malibu. He's a rich kid. Grew up. His dad was this uh, was like an entertainment industry guy, and Rich Roll was like an entertainment lawyer for a while. Um, so you know I mean, he's he lives out in the Malibu Hills. Um, he's a rich kid. His his last name is not really Roll. Um, so you know Rich seems like a nice guy. Uh, seems really, really uh, fucking dumb. Also, uh, so he's he's being paraded around in this uh, this lab grown meat. These guys, the amount of investment into these companies is staggering. All right, so Memphis Meats. One of the guys who's investing in Memphis Meats is also the guy who uh, helps to bankroll plant based news. Plant based news. Uh, with Clive's over there, so he bankrolls plant based news. He funds uh, their little operation there, and they made videos about this. His father, his father. Very, very interesting, interesting guy. Um, just quit advertising other people's channels in my chat, dorks. <laughs> All right. Anyways, his father, very, very interesting guy, actually owns a yacht that was used as a Bond villain's yacht. <laughs> so uh, Prince uh, Al-Walid bin Talal, I think is his name. Prince Khalid, I believe, is the son who runs the investment wing of his daddy's fortune. Um, so, you know, there's just some Saudi royals who have been accused of human trafficking, international arms dealing, and stuff like that. Just nice people uh, involved in investing in some of these companies. You've got uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who have historically funded the GMO revolution, the destruction of the small family farm. Now, pushing for the clean meat. They want to finish the job, get completely rid of animal husbandry and the so-called peasantry. Um, these rural people like us who live out in areas, who don't live in big cities, the socially engineered cities, um, are continuously being targeted with propaganda, both dehumanizing right dehumanizing us call people that live out in the hills calling them hicks they're idiots they're uneducated they don't know what's good for them we got to tell them what to do with their land what to do with their bodies what to do with their water what to do with their property um uh, so it's just it's crazy and it's amazing to see this push uh for the fake meat and what's the or orwellian double speak term they give it clean meat they call it clean meat <laughs> What a joke, right? Clean meat. Come on. So you've got uh, the Grow Food Institute, which he's involved in. Um, you know, it's just for small investors. Look at all these people. And these guys have never picked up a shovel or a wrench in their life. But they're going to tell all of us what's okay, what's good to do with our lives. And uh, they're going to they're gonna save us from evil animal husbandry. They're going to save me from being able to raise my own animals, slaughter them, and feed my family with them. Because um, remember, guys, us meat eaters, we've got to be stopped. You know, the, the, the Carbo Raider, he, he put out that beautiful piece of journalism documenting the, uh, that Sean Baker and, and my, myself apparently are, uh, are just terrible meat eaters, implied white supremacist at the end. I mean, I guess I, I've got white skin. And I was I, I I touched my I touched my uh my thumb to my forefinger so that makes you a white supremacist now apparently according to that guy's it was a video we just watched uh, but yeah new crop new crop capital this is the investment firm that that guy um, uh, what's his name Bruce Friedrich is involved in and check out all these companies that they're investing in Sunfed Meats pea protein fake meat. Good catch, 100% plant-based, shelf-stable, frozen f seafood. Are you freaking kidding me? You can't call it seafood if it comes from peas and wheat and corn and canola oil, you freaking dorks. You're right. You're, I do. I have short hair as well. But it's not like totally shaved. See, I do have some fuzz. Uh, your meat, your meat makes you go bald. I, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not completely bald yet. I'm sure one day you'll be able to tell me that eating meat made me bald. Um, so yeah, they also invest in Beyond Meat, which we've talked about many times. Bill Gates, one of the bigger investors in there, as well as Tyson Foods and General Mills. So again, all these huge processed food companies frothing at the mouth. You know, uh, it, it's a wet dream to have all these cheap whores 
to actually push your products. I mean, what what a wet dream for industry to have these vegans who think they're enlightened, who think that it's their right to tell everyone else what to do with their land, with their bodies, with their money. What a wet dream for big corporations that they've got this whole army of people to give them free advertising on YouTube. You don't even have to pay them directly. You don't even have to meet them. (laughs) These people are going to be marching in droves to support this fake plant-based meat stuff and try and propel it into the mainstream consciousness. Obviously, nobody in Ecuador is going to buy fake lab-grown meat right now, but these people know that in just a few years, you can brainwash people pretty effectively. I mean, in one generation... You educate one generation, you can educate two generations, three generations. Oh my, you can have the utopia. So the clean meat revolution. Their investment portfolio is pretty broad. I mean, that was just the first line. Check out all these ones. More fake uh, ocean hunger food, sustainable plant-based alternatives, your favorite seafood dishes. Ocean hugger, rather. Purple carrot. It's a very aptly named... Super meat, there you go. Israeli biotech food tech startup developing lab made chicken meat. Wow, that's so amazing. Lab made chicken meat. Right? I can just have some chickens that'll hatch 20 hatchlings <laughs> every month if I let them. <laughs> and I'll have tons of chickens running around. I can feed them scraps from the cows that we can slaughter and eat. I feed them the bones, feed them vegetables. How crazy is this? Good dot. Memphis meets Miyako's kitchen. So big money getting pushed into this. And, you know, these people are, uh, you know, these people are enamored by it. I like money. I like money. I mean, the first, the easiest way to get somebody to push your shit is you flatter them. You tell them that they're amazing. They're brilliant. You're a fantastic athlete. Um, And then to like, for these people to actually be making money or be th- you know be understanding and looking at this and looking at this agenda as a way to like secure their legacy All right so rich roll has got them kids growing up malibu hills over there they get i get, get on that clean meat revolution bandwagon so who knows i mean if this guy's invested in these companies or not obviously it wouldn't be one of the bigger investors you know like bill gates richard branson uh but these people are totally willing. These a lot of the people in the vegan movement, just like in the, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what diet you're on, what branch of uh, humanity you're a part of, we're fallible, and we can be hijacked, coerced, using money, flattery, pride, vanity, to push all sorts of nonsense and believe all sorts of nonsense. So uh, yeah, interesting stuff here. Bruce Friedrich. Um, Another cool thing. So this actually came out 29th October of this year. Recently published article. Uh, Of course, it's a meta-analysis. But I think it's really interesting um, that science is out here telling us that a vegan and vegetarian diet will weaken you and will make you frail. So, I mean, it's not just all those those hate mongers on the Internet. What do they call them? Uh, Um... I don't know, they'll call them like meat supremacists soon, right? Uh, or neo, like neo something, neo meat supremacists. <laughs> um, I guess that could be a name for the fake meat crowd, huh? The neo meat supremacists. Um, but no, this isn't just a bunch of jerks making fun of the poor, protected vegans, these poor oppressed people. This is uh, some scientific article talking about how vegetarian and vegan diets decrease bone mineral density. All right, so we got to eat our steaks, guys. Get that meat in. The saturated fat, cholesterol, these are vital parts of the human body. The brain is made out of cholesterol. Cholesterol is required for repair processes in the body, for immune function, for vitamin D production, for hormone production. Low cholesterol associated with depression, anxiety, violence. You know, violence. I mean, it's, it's no joke, guys. We've got to get that meat in. That's why this is the, the Make America Steak Again election special. Uh, so get your meat in, folks. Less your bone mineral density decrease and you increase your fracture risk. So, of course, it's, it's a meta-analysis. It's interesting. 
Two investigators evaluated 275 studies against the inclusion criteria, original studies in humans, written in English or Spanish, including vegetarian or vegan diets and omnivorous diets as factors with BMD values for the whole body, lumbar spine and femoral neck, or the number of fractures as the outcome. An exclusion criteria, so they excluded articles that didn't include imaging or studies that included participants who had suffered a fracture before starting a vegetarian or vegan diet. Okay, so of course, I mean, obviously, you can't have a perfect meta-analysis. Uh, I'm very, very skeptical of epidemiology. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's so easy to skew these. But do we really need this to tell us what we already know? Do we really need this to tell us that a vegetarian and vegan diet can lead to bone mineral density losses? I mean, we see the frailty in a lot of the people pushing veganism now. Um, you know, a lot of the heads of the movement themselves obviously having really serious health issues, which sucks because people are so ideologically blinded, right? And they've been brainwashed into this extremist ideology. Um, only possible to really brainwash people who live in big cities into this crap. All right, so the rural people are not buying that shit. Rural people aren't buying into it. All right. See a bunch of comments here. If you guys want me to read your comments, you can always hit the, the super chat option. I'll read super chats. I can't catch up with everything people are saying. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah, blah so much. All right. So... <laughs> Someone says, I can't wait to see Goji Man on your show. Yeah, I hope he comes on and still hasn't responded to me. Uh, you know, I, I wrote him an email a week ago. He responds with a jump cut video. Obviously, wasn't too excited with the manner in which he responded. I felt like it was very intellectually dishonest, emotionally manipulative, and not really a very, not very, uh, uh, <laughs> Not a very good way to go about it. I'll say that. So we'll see if he comes on. Of course, I'd love to have Goji Man on to talk. He said December. He said December. He didn't have time, but he has time to jump into every one of my live streams. He's got time to have Google alerts and watch everything I say and find me mentioning him in my streams. None of which are ever about him. He always pops up in here. He does get mentioned because his name pops up. He comes to all my streams. Yet, he doesn't have time to talk that's fine he has time to make jump cut videos uh who knows how long he has time to film that for whatever so veganism vegetarian bone mineral density and fracture risk interesting study here i'd like to see the full text but i mean epidemiology um not so stoked on epidemiology very very easy to skew results cherry pick but interesting nonetheless Cow cuddling is the new wellness trend now, and it costs 300 bucks for a 90-minute session. So not only are these dorks in Silicon Valley and in Malibu and their million-dollar homes talking about how we got to stop eating meat. we got to eat meat grown in labs. Bill Gates going to help us. Got to eat that clean meat to stop the overpopulation problem. Right? Too many people farting and breathing and tell you your exhalations are toxic. I tell you it's bad to be human. I raise you up in the university system, in elementary school as well now, with this fake eco-religion, you know, this false environmentalism. It has nothing to do with actually protecting environment. It has everything to do with consolidating resources and allowing the pillaging of those resources internationally by these massive corporations. And it's not just the corporations. I mean, the corporations are just the shell for moving money around, just like these NGOs, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation. So, fascinating times, guys. Fascinating times. We've got a lot of uh, development here in the uh, the shilling for the clean meat revolution, right? Bra brainwash everybody into thinking that's clean, right? So just the very name, it conjures up that the other meat is dirty. This is the clean meat. Other meat, bad meat. Real meat, bad. Clean meat, good. Clean meat, good. That's going to be the internet content in like five years. That'll be vegan YouTube. Just like some zonked out millennials. Clean meat, good. Clean meat, good. <laughs> Being interrogated by their computer. Do you know what it likes to feel human? What it's like to feel like a human? Humans feel too much. 
I do not feel. I think. Clean meat good. Clean meat good. Bald man bad. Beard man bad. Meat eater bad. Eliminate meat eater. What's up, David? David's throwing five bucks out there. He didn't even want me to read it. Thanks, buddy, for supporting the show, which usually gets demonetized. I don't know why my streams get demonetized. My, my videos don't get demonetized, but my streams regularly do. <laughs> yeah, that evil, evil CO2 that you guys are all breathing. Hold your breaths, guys. Hold your breaths. So you don't have to pay too many carbon taxes. To Bill Gates. Ah, Bill Gates not collecting. He's just... He's just out there doing the dirty work, selling it to the plebs on behalf of the IMF and World Bank. Sorry, yeah, Bruce Friedrich, he uh, serves on the advisory board of the Christian Vegetarian Association and is the founding member of the Society of Ethical and Religious Vegetarians. So hiding behind religion, making claims that are actually completely against the religion that he says he adheres to. He right, calls himself the, the head of the Christian Vegetarian Association. Christian Vegetarian Association. This is crazy. I mean, this is, who, let's see, where did, where did this start? No, just misinterpreting scripture. <laughs> All right. let, let, let's, let's see what, you know what the Bible actually says about forbidding people to eat meat? All right, so these people, the Seventh-day Adventists. Oh, these uh, these other silly little goofy sects. Many of them, like Seventh Day Adventists, uh, 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 Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't think Jehovah's Witnesses actually promote anything to do with vegetarianism. But there's just it's funny when you look at so many of these little Christian sects and cults that have come up. These fake hiding behind the word Christianity sects that have come out, and uh, a lot of them started by like Freemasons and stuff. You know, Seventh Day Adventists. That dude, what was his name? What was his last name? He was a Freemason, uh, as well as the Jehovah's Witness dude. If you look at his grave, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big old pyramid with an eye. So yeah, anybody who knows anything about Masonry or studied Masonry you know, understands that it's not a Christian organization. Very, very uh, different ideology that's taught there. So here's this from the, uh, the, the Protestant King James Version. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. Hmm. So in the latter times, people will be speaking lies and hypocrisy, forbidding to marry and abstain from meats, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. So this guy calls himself a Christian. Has he, has he not read the Bible? So the Christian Vegetarian Association hasn't read the Bible, which actually says that it is a... Uh, it is <laughs> not an act of kindness to tell people to abstain from eating meat to not marry and have children hmm interesting doing the opposite of what he says it should be all right so here's christianveg.org joyful compassionate eating christianity and vegetarianism from christian vegetarian association honoring god's creation a plant-based diet honors god it says it helps us become healthy, joyful, effective servants of God, and it avoids the animal cruelty, environmental damage, and human misery associated with factory farms. So just totally twisting, <laughs> twisting this and ignoring scripture. Weird stuff. How do they justify it? So just with like childish... Wow. All right. <laughs> I don't want to look at this nonsense. All right. Anyway, so fascinating. Fascinating. Last time we talked a little bit about the the Indian vegetarian myth. It was like most of India is actually not vegetarian. That's interesting. Just another 
an article about what constituted a balanced Indian diet. Because of repeated famine in the late 18th century, the British were interested in new, plant, new food plants which might help ward off starvation and human misery, but they're also perplexed by the quantity and quality of food to be provided. In 1874, this guy, Sir Richard Temple, Sir Richard Temple, stated that a diet of one pound of grain was enough to sustain life, and the government could not be expected to do more. So there's the rationing. One pound, you get one pound of grain a day, and that'll, that'll keep you alive. Wow, what a, what a malnourishing diet. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. All right, we had this, I found this other article. So there was a slew, actually, of articles that were published this week. We didn't even get a touch on all of them yesterday. So we got so distracted by he who may not be criticized uh, coming into the chat, and then I had to respond to his crazy video. Um, you know, it was completely... Uh, ridiculous video. But here's another article. Vegophobia. Media eats veganism. This is from 2011. This is the oldest article I could find using the word vegophobia. Vegophobia, derogatory discourses in veganism and the reproduction of speciesism in UK national newspapers. Speciesism. This is on PubMed. Right? <laughs> I, I wonder if... Uh, yeah, this. I mean, this is just absurd. You know, some more of this, like, insane social scientist bullshit. Veganism is status passage, the process of becoming vegan among youths in Sweden. Sweden. Being socially engineered quite quickly over there in Sweden. In fact, I heard about a study done in Sweden in schools, which was really disturbing to me, that they were doing these social experiments on these kids in the school. I forget the exact nature of the study, so I don't want to try and describe it because I think I'm mixing in several studies in my mind. But, um, yeah, interesting. Vegophobia, guys. And uh, I, I learned about this word from this amazing article. Look at, those, look at those vegans right there. Look at those heroic activists dehumanizing themselves, putting themselves on a plate with blood all over themselves. They're just like, Bill Gates, devour me. Memphis meats, eat me. Oligarchs, feed on our blood. We're putting ourselves, our lives, our souls, all our beliefs on a platter for you. Keep it clean in the chat. Sometimes people try to get me kicked off YouTube by saying naughty things in the chat. Keep it clean over there. Okay? Still trying to figure out what's going on with the algorithms on YouTube. People in the chat seem to be able to get your video flagged. So, sometimes I will remove comments, but that doesn't mean that I'm mad at you. It just means I'm trying not to get kicked off of YouTube if I remove your comment. Also, keep it clean, jerks. Don't try to get me kicked off. Little troll accounts. Why do vegans have such bad reputations? Well, perhaps because you're involved in street theater that's completely dehumanizing. You know that this street theater type stuff was one of the major parts of the, Soviet, of the Bolshevik Revolution and the Maoist Revolution as well? And I'm constantly talking about how veganism is so easily hijacked by these corporate oligarchic interests that are looking to create a structure worldwide of complete control of resources. And it's, it's basically here. You know, pe people don't understand that Google and YouTube and Facebook, actually, I'm not sure about YouTube, but Google and Facebook actively involved with the Chinese government, <laughs> which has social credits. And if you're naughty, if you talk to the wrong person, if somebody reports you for the wrong thing, just like in the Soviet gulag system, but it's a, it's a little bit more gentle, right? It's really nice. It's like updated. It's upgraded. It's like an upgraded gulag system. <laughs> but the digital gulag over there in China allows people to be rated with social credits. <laughs> As YouTube is now... Censoring many channels, as Google censoring many channels. Very interesting. Um, so yeah, why do vegans have such bad reputations? Well, maybe it's because of how you act. Maybe it's because you're out in the streets dehumanizing yourselves and you think it's cool and artistic. Maybe it's because you're doing scenes like this. 
right? More and more people are adopting plant-based diets in Australia and other Western nations. A lot in Australia. So this is an Australian article. But also seemingly on the rise is resentment towards vegans and vegetarians. Ow, poor vegans. This can range from ridicule on social media sites to bumper stickers. Recently, all right, so this guy Sitwell. Everybody keeps talking about Sitwell. Oh, he said something mean. He said something stupid. These poor vegans are under attack. What is it that makes vegans so annoying? <laughs> So she goes, high horse, you know, the fake moral high ground, definitely, definitely true. Um, an ad from PETA suggested that feeding kids meat is child abuse, when in fact not feeding kids meat is child abuse. The key reason people adopt a plant-based diet is concerns about animal cruelty and suffering. Several activist organizations, in a bid to encourage people to reduce meat consumption, highlight the mistreatment and slaughter of animals by showing graphic and often shocking images, which can trigger strong emotions. Shock and awe. Trauma-based programming of the plebes. This tactic, while effective in attracting attention, can also backfire. For one, exposure to animal cruelty can be overwhelming. It can make people avoid taking further action. This is obviously written by a vegan. Extending kindness to omnivores. On the other hand, there are messages vegans and vegetarians can use that may be received better. Reducitarian. Reducitarian. Eat less meat. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of people talking about reducitarianism for the next few years. And you hear that already a lot. And you're going to hear words like plant-based. It's rebranding of the same thing. Rebranding the Soylent Slop diet as plant-based. Plant-based enlightened diet. The plant-based diet of sterility. Right, so the Reducitarian Foundation. We've got to reduce, guys. Despite the growing popularity of plant-based food movement, it seems that the respect and empathy for animals, which lies at the very heart of this movement, could perhaps also be extended towards others who make different choices, and in so doing, open the doors towards greater acceptance. Yes, exactly. So stop telling me you hope I die with a heart, of a heart attack, vegans. And maybe other people won't think you're such cruel dorks and pissed-off nerd gamers. And I thought this was the article that mentioned this awesome word. Well, here's another article. So it's just this slew of articles the last few days. All the same thing. New Zealand, Australia, the UK, the US. Why does everyone hate vegans? Different article or different, uh, <laughs> different authors, but same dang art article. So this one talks about, this was the term I was looking for, vegaphobia. So if you're annoyed with vegans pushing down your throat, legislating you out of your ability to eat meat, gaslighting your children in schools, right? trying to educate your children, right? if you're sick of creepy, stinky, slimy hippies trying to tell you what you could do with your life, with your land, with your body, what you could put in your body, and promoting taxation on these foods, promoting the complete banning of animal agriculture. If you don't like that, you're a vegaphobe, right? So they're, they're trying to mix it in. Just like we saw deniers the other day, the cholesterol deniers. Phobe is another one. Oh, you're just scared of vegans. I don't think anybody's scared of vegans. I think people are just annoyed with the constant barrage of propaganda. And it's not the vegans. It's like most vegans don't care about it. It's the ones you see online, right? There's just like this small group of very, very active trolls on the internet. Many of them have decent followings. You know, trolls like these people that come on my <laughs> Instagram, vegan wildlife photographer, and just whole threads, I don't even respond to, but just whole threads of vegans talking to each other on my post. Right? Of you know, psychopathic psychopathic gamers talking about stomping babies who actually I'm going to be uh, talking with on Friday. Mr. Gaines, Mr. Vegan Gaines. He's this highly reputable scholar on the internet that's just totally emotionally stable and really psychologically healthy. We're going to be debating uh, vegan ethics with Vegan Gaines. The nihilist vegan Gaines is going to make his points for why we should go vegan. So he's going to convince me about the vegan ethics. So yeah, I'll be on, on Vegan Gaines stream with Jay Dyer. Jay and I are going to be talking to Vegan Gaines and ask yourself, 
who's like, like vegan gains. He's, I guess he's got this. Uh, they have they have like a crew. They have a debate crew. Vegan gains. Ask yourself and a couple other of these millennial gamer people. Um, I, I guess they uh, they have like a Discord. And they use the Discord. They have thousands of people in their Discord, and they, they win every debate. Never admit defeat. And they're they're apparently going to crush Jay Dyer and I. We're going to talk about vegan ethics. So yeah, it's going to be on Friday, one o'clock Eastern time. So shout out to Mr. Jay Dyer. Make sure to check out Jay's channel. I was going to do a stream earlier, but I, Jay was streaming. I was listening to Jay. So yeah, Jay and I are going to talk to uh, to vegan gains and ask yourself about vegan ethics, uh, morality. And uh, basically, I mean, it's what that really comes down to is it's going to be a debate. This is basically going to be atheism versus theism. All right, so I'll be making the point that veganism and their moral philosophy is a religion, makes metaphysical claims, and they will be, of course, spouting their evangelical atheism. So that'll be interesting. So yeah, no, I know. I, we all know how the vegan gains debates usually go. I've seen he's, he's always it's always the same thing. So we'll see. It, it might be interesting. It might not. I think it's going to be interesting to talk to. Uh, ask yourself. Uh, he's a little bit more sharp. He's a little bit better read than vegan gains. Um, I have no interest in debating doing the the classic internet bum fight with vegan gains. Right. Um, you, you're all, I'll tell you the story, guys. So anyways, Eisel. I was trying to get Eisel Mazard, uh, on my show. He's one of the half-reasonable, half-coherent vegans online. Um, definitely more intelligent than 90% of them. I mean, he's no, he's no Joey Carbstrong. There's no Joey Carbstrong. Look at them Carbstrong eyes right there. But he's really intelligent uh, compared to most of these vegans online, which what does that really say, right? Uh, so I very respectfully asked, reached out to him, asked him to come on, and then he sends me a link to this guy, Ask Yourself's Twitter, where he has a link to his Discord. So I hadn't really heard of this guy before, and I realized it was Vegan Gains Debate Squad. He just said, yeah, screw you. Go talk to Vegan Gains Debate Squad. <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm not trying to have a debate. I wanted you to actually come on my channel and talk, essentially. So that's, that's why I said. I'm not looking for a cartoon to respond to my content, asking if you'd come on and have a conversation and present your views. Apparently he didn't. So I made a nice comment. I said, "All right." He made a he made a real uh, smart ass comment. Ouch! He may be a cartoon, but cartoons have feelings too, man. He's being really cheeky. He's so smart. Uh, damn! Never thought of it that way. Mind equals blown. I said. Anyways, wanted to have you on for a talk because I consider you one of the most, or maybe the only, intelligent, well-spoken vegan, vegan channels. I'm feeling so hurty that you tell me to bugger off and talk to the vegan gains debate squad. If you change your mind and are down to talk. You can pick the subject. I'd love to chat. So basically, I just wanted to have a conversation with this guy, right? I have no interest in the, the fake debates, right, where these guys uh, go through their whole list of cherry-picked articles and browbeat the shit out of them. And then he, he, uh, he responds. He's pissed. He's very upset that I'm on his channel, I guess. He says, thanks. I can accept a compliment from anyone, but you've got to keep it in perspective. I may be the most intelligent and well-spoken vegan that you know, which I didn't say that. I actually know smarter vegans than him but it's on on vegan youtube right so it's basically it's like you're the you're the most handsome guy at the fucking hot dog eating competition basically or you're the you're the, you're the smartest kid on the small bus um so yeah uh he says i can accept a compliment from anyone but you've got to keep it in perspective i may be the most intelligent well-spoken vegan that you know but you're not remotely the most intelligent meat eater that I know. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Burn, dog. I, was like, I mean, you, you could have at least come on my channel and talk some shit. That would have been funner. All right. But, you know, I, I told him, I guess I'd be salty little. I said, I guess I'd be a salty little Cracker Jack, too. If I were a true believer in an inane worldview and someone was converting thousands of people out of my nihilist, vegangelical, hacktivist, self-refuting religion. If you change your mind, you're always welcome to come with the hashtag Eat Me Make Family stream. You just, eat, I love using hashtag Eat Me Make Families because it triggers the shit out of these people who hate children, who hate families, who hate traditional values, who hate meat eaters, who hate themselves, most of them. So, yeah, it sucks because I actually, you know, respectfully came to him, actually did have some respect for him because he criticizes these dork vegans and their shit hacktivism. Um, but, alas, that's the world of veganism. So, 
I posted this. I said, why do these vegan YouTube gurus avoid real discourse? Why do they deny invites to converse and present their position to a large audience? Even the half-coherent vegan evangelical choir boys are unwilling to engage outside a carefully framed, curated safe space. Name the trait! <laughs> All right, so. And then his name is Richard Burgess. Vegan Gaines. Everybody's favorite psychopath online. We avoid discourse? Okay, how about we set up a discussion slash debate on health and ethics? <laughs> he wants to run debateprogram.exe which I have no interest in debating vegan gains doing the thousandth debate of vegan gains vegan gains is ceremonial debates on health right but I would I would have loved and this is what I was thinking when he said this I was like, damn I would like to I'd actually like to see a debate with vegan gains friend because I checked out the the guy uh, Isaac ask yourself I checked out his channel you know I had I'm not going to just brush it off okay well maybe there's something here maybe there's something interesting you know maybe isaac or no I, what's his name Isel. maybe Isel is really doing me a favor you know so i followed his crumbs and i looked into uh ask yourself and he has some, some fun and interesting debates he's animated he's funny he always thinks he wins he gets pissed at people everyone's a sophist if they don't if they don't see it just like him. Uh, but I, th I, I did see him, uh, I saw a couple clips, more interesting, pretty decently versed in some of the lingo, philosophical lingo, which I haven't delved into in years. And it was interesting. And I was like, damn, I would like to see Jay talk to this guy. Right? So I, I, I always love watching Jay debates, and uh, he's, he does a great job at presenting his argument. And I've actually learned a lot from Jay about some of the, I mean, he's, he's helped me to flesh out and to verbalize and to effectively be able to argue so many of the points that they're kind of sometimes difficult to verbalize. So I think Jay does a great job at uh, presenting a uh, very, very coherent argument, as you see in uh, many of his debates, uh, when he debates these atheists. All right, so I mean, these people are always making these religious claims about morality and ethics, but then they claim that they're atheists and that there's no morality, that there's no objective moral structure. There's no objective morality. There's no objective truth. All right, these are nihilists, but they want it both ways. They want to tell everyone else to live like there is objective truth. So I thought it was I thought it was interesting. I said, all right, well, definitely not interested in debating vegan gains on my channel. Talk a little shit. So I'd rather just let you, let you lads keep making your response videos and sending your audience to our ex-vegan recovery sanctuary. I quite enjoy your work. You don't need me to help. You do a great job discrediting your religion, even without my purdy face. And he's pissed. Talk some shit. You're a pussy, basically. <laughs> okay, so you know you'd lose miserably in a debate, and you're the one avoiding discourse. Funny how vegans are all part of some crazy religion, but you don't even have enough knowledge or confidence in your own beliefs to see if your ideas hold up under scrutiny. Echo chamber much. Ooh, call out. Classic vegan gains. Debate me, debate me. On my stream. My rules. Just like, dude. I thought he wanted to come on my stream because the whole thing was about me inviting Isel onto my stream. And vegan gains, like, debate me. I got eat meat, make families. You promote vasectomies and baby stomping. You have no place in my fucking content, dude. Um... So I said, Richard, don't get your vasectomy genitals in a bunch. I'll invite you on for a conversation sometimes. I wanted to talk to Eisel, but I can give you some attention too if you need. I don't do internet bum fights, but you can come on my channel and we can have a real talk like real humans. <laughs> I said, not inviting every sterile ideolog bum on the internet who finds your Instagram to the Eat Me Make Family show is avoiding discourse? He says, no, I'm challenging you to do a live debate on my channel and you're refusing because you know you'd lose miserably. Keep making excuses. It's funny how you joke about me being sterile, but you're the one with shriveled up testicles. I so, said, okay, you want me to come on your channel? And I've always wanted to see, I've always wanted to try to get Jay to debate Richard. I always thought that would be an interesting debate because Jay does a really good job at presenting the arguments that I've made very several times on this show. I always thought it would be interesting to see those two together. So 
Yeah, I thought I thought that would be cool. So I asked him if Jay can come. And we talk about vegan ethics with him and his squad slash Discord server. Because right? we all know vegan games. He has this whole debate squad and a, dis- and a Discord server. They roll around like a gang. Crush it. They crush everybody. They crush everybody in every debate. Um, so, yeah. He said, I'd rather debate live over Hangouts. I guess he thought we were saying debate on Discord. And I was just saying that that's who we're debating. We're debating him, all his little friends, his vegan debate squad, the vegan debates debaters, and, uh, and his Discord server. He thought I was saying something else. He didn't get the joke. He said, if you're going to bring a debate partner, then I'll bring Ask Yourself, which is perfect because that's the guy I wanted to see talk to Jay. So um, Ask Yourself really likes to talk. He likes to talk as much as I like to talk. Jay is very, very well spoken. I think um, I think it'll be a fun and lively chat. Um, obviously, I'll be very civil, like I always am when I actually talk to people. We're going to be on his uh, stream, but I'll stream it here on my channel as well. It'll be fun. Me and Jay versus Ask Yourself, uh, whose name is Isaac, and, uh, and Richard, Mr. Vegan Gains. So that's going to be fun. Um, so yeah, vegan ethics. We're going to debate the vegan ethics. Um, so that'll be interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of arguments they'll make. I, I hear they always do this name the trait thing, which I've seen him do with, uh, was, it, uh, was it JF or something when Vegan Gains debated JF? Um, so I'm, I'm really not sure what to expect. I'm not really sure where they go with their name, the trait thing. It's just seems kind of fallacious to me, but we'll see. Maybe it's, maybe they'll convince me. Maybe they'll be totally right with name, the trait and name, the trait will con- convince everybody to go vegan. Um, so that's interesting. We'll see if there's any, a bunch of comments, bunch of comments. All right. If you guys want me to read your comments, you do the super chats. I don't see any. I don't know. You guys are bantering amongst yourselves. So yeah, there we go. We're gonna be talking on a on Friday. This guy says it'll be milk jar and three ridge versus VG and AY 2.0, and then all these vegans come and talk shit and say you're gonna die. You're gonna die. Ask yourself. Says we haven't bodied a team of carnists in a while. This should be fun. I don't really know what that means. Um. But that sounds like, sounds kind of kinky. I'm not sure if I'm down to get bodied by any men. But it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Ask yourself, he's, he seems like a, like actually a, I mean, I haven't seen that much of his content, but I saw a couple conversations with him. And he's sharp guy. Sharp guy seems fun. I don't know how, I don't know. Not sure what he's all about. That'll be fun. So, oh, someone has said, you read Madden Lee P. Hall, The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Yeah, that's funny. I found that book in a used bookstore in like 2008, 2009. I think it was 2009. Um, that was a uh, interesting time when I found that book. I found that book. I read that one and, uh, and Morals and Dogma from Albert Pike that, uh, that year. And that was pretty crazy. So, all right, guys. Yeah, that's going to be on Friday. I'll stream it here on my channel or you can watch it on Vegan Gains' channel. Or is he, I think he has like a streaming channel. I'm not sure. That'll be on Friday. It'll be fun. Ask Yourself and Vegan Gains versus Jay Dyer and my punk ass. Debating the ethics. Atheism versus theism. Atheism versus theism debate. The, ace, the atheist nihilist baby stomper versus, versus Jay Dyer, the future president of Byzantium <laughs> and myself some dork on the internet and it's going to be fun hashtag eat meat make families someone says vegan gain is going to be waving his knife I don't know I haven't some of his videos I'll watch his videos he, every once in a while I'll put out a video that is interesting to watch I like to watch him driving his motorcycle around just talking about how much he hates everybody and how much everyone sucks <laughs> um i like those those videos are fun and then the videos where he talks about like his his dreams and stuff are always interesting where he talks about kind of the uh, the, the subconscious of vegan gains i like those ones or when he talked about his mushroom experience <laughs> yeah we're all one we're all one so yeah, that's gonna be funny. Who knows? Who knows how that'll go? But yeah, 
atheism. Glass house atheism. House of cards theism. Yeah, so the theism versus atheism debate, that'll be fun with vegan gains. What else, guys? Let's see. I had some other things pulled up here. Vegaphobia. Don't be a vegaphobe, guys. If you don't want veganism to be pushed on you, if you don't want reducitarianism to be enforced through legislation, which that's what this is. People don't understand that it's not just like, I, I could care less what you eat. Right? And I've said that a hundred thousand times on this channel. In fact, I never said anything against this vegan agenda until recently when there was such a massive push against us for not eating plants. <laughs> oh, how dare these people not eat plants? They're such a threat. They're such a threat. So there's this huge blowback and it was, it was time. You know, I didn't even talk about my ex-vegan experiences up until very recently. So I'm not here to bash on everybody who likes to eat plants or vegans. I don't care what you eat. But the vegan activists, the vegangelicals, the tofu Taliban, that's what I'm sick of hearing from. And this stuff is being pushed on us with billions of dollars, billions of dollars, through guys like this lovely man, philanthropist, of the clean meat revolution, what was his name again? Bruce Friedrich, right? Bill Gates, Memphis Meats, which we're going to talk more about lab-grown meats and all this stuff in the near future too. But it's not, it's not like this is actually a vegan agenda, right? Just like it's not a, I don't know, I mean, how many other wings of this or tentacles of this hydra are there, right? People talk about... Um, Banking, right? Oh, it's, it's banking. It's not, just, it's not banking. That's one aspect. Right? It's not vegan diet. It's just unhealthy processed food diet that gets pushed on people. And the vegan movement is a fantastic vehicle for pushing that. So it's not like these people, you know, it's not like the, uh, the people that are really funding this and pushing this, these big foundations, these NGOs, um, you know, the, the investment bankers and stuff like that, they don't care about you going vegan. They care about you eating the shit they want to sell you. They care about dumbing you down. They care about immune compromising you. Right? Vegan is not the problem. Vegan is just one little group of very, very weak, vulnerable people. I mean, I don't mean weak physically, like the article we just read about frail, boned vegans. That's science that says that. Science is hate speeching against vegans. But it's weak in their life. Right? People we're we're looking for meaning. We want meaning. I mean a lot of people they come to veganism after traumatic experiences, drug addiction, traumatic health experiences. You know, I mean, a lot of these uh, vegan hacktivists out there like got out of prison and then decide, oh, I'm going vegan. That's going to be my new religion. Right? I mean, it's a secular religion that elevates this moral claim of we cannot eat animals, that it's bad. Eat animals bad. But animals can eat animals in the wild, but humans are bad if we eat animals. Yet these people, these atheists, these materialists believe that we're just animals. There's nothing delineating us from animals. There's nothing that separates us from animals in the materialist worldview, in the atheist worldview. Well, how could you make a moral claim that we've got to be vegan, but animals don't? Why don't animals need to be vegan too? Well, humans have a choice. What do you mean we have a choice? What is choice? How can you account for choice in an atheist materialist worldview, in a determinist worldview? How is there choice? So I'm, so I'm interested in these ideas. I'm, I'm very curious on what other people think about this stuff. Um, but yeah, so there's, no, there's not like a, there's a problem with vegans. No problem with vegans. It's just a movement that's been duped, just like so many other movements, to suit the agenda of these big NGOs and the oligarchic ruling class. That hides behind these NGOs, like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, that pumps billions of dollars through Tyson Foods, through General Mills, 
that merges Bayer and Monsanto before our very eyes. Pharmaceutical company, the pharmaceutical wing with the big agriculture wing have combined. Big ag, big pharma, forming like Voltron. So it's going to be interesting times, guys. People are going to be keeping pushing this crap. People are going to keep on pushing this. And it's going to get harder and harder for people to resist the propaganda because repetition is the greatest form of mind control. Repetition is the greatest form of mind control. Repetition is the greatest form of mind control. How many times have you seen articles about the vegan celebrities? All the amazing vegan celebrities. Look at these beautiful, heroic vegan celebrities. PETA crowns the most beautiful vegan celebrities of 2018. The time has come. Those, those are beautiful. The dude on the right looks like an ostrich. Cumberbatch. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. He's actually a really good actor. Who's this lady? I see two vegans. Those are the most beautiful celebrities that Pete has crowned. BuzzFeed. Everybody's favorite. BuzzFeed. 18 celebrities you didn't realize led a vegan lifestyle. Just a few days ago, this one came out. Alicia Silverstone. Wow. She was like so amazing and clueless. And now she's vegan. She was like my childhood hero. I wanted to be just like her and clueless and marry Paul Rudd. Dress up all slutty and get attention. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. The RZA. Funny bone tickler. Feet calicular. Bigger dick sex enigma. <laughs> the RZA. Six sex zig law. Dude, the RZA's vegan? I might go vegan now. All right. Wu-Tang Clan. The head of the Wu-Tang Clan. For the children. Veganism for the children. Are you kidding me, Riza? You dumbass. Nice picture, bro. Hella esoteric. Hella esoteric, dude. Covering your right eye. That's dope, bro. He's got a freaking... Wow. 36 chambers. The Riza is a vegan. That's why his music sucked since 1997. The RZA had some great verses, though, right? The RZA used to be sick. Poor RZA. Erica Badu. Looking like a... The hell is that? It looked like you blended up the UN and poured it on your fucking shirt. Benedict Cumberbatch. All right. Peter Dinklage, say it ain't so. Tyrion Lannister. Tyrion. <laughs> Tyrion's vegan. Miley Cyrus, everybody's favorite public, publicly abused child. Liam Hemsworth. So there you go. A bunch of vegans going celebrity. Uh, Sia. We saw Sia last time. Look how esoteric her hair is. That's so awesome. Oh, it's so cool that they promote this degeneracy and schizophrenia in the media. Do any of these people really look healthy to me? It's hard to say. That guy kind of looks healthy. Mike Tyson. Can't say anything bad about Mike Tyson. <laughs> but the Kids' Choice Awards. All right. Hmm. BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed's got a lot of vegans working there. A vegan world will is coming. We will make it happen. Be a rebel. Be vegan. Be a vegan activist. One day the majority will be right. One day the majority will be vegan. You want to be a part of the majority of the future? Go vegan. Plant-based. Oh, it's plant-based news. 
Klaus from Plant Based News. Crazy, right? Be a rebel. <laughs> what a joke. Be a rebel. Do exactly what the Fortune 100 wants you to do. Be a rebel. Buy processed vegan foods and make yourself immune compromised. That's so rebellious, right? Seventeen magazine with the famous vegan celebrities. Saw this one before too. You know, Richard Branson in Vegan Life magazine. The slaughter of animals will be a thing of the past in 30 years. Says Richard Branson, who's donated, let's see, not donated, who's invested, doesn't even talk about it, invested lots and lots of money into lab-grown meat. Richard Branson. In 30 years, we'll be shocked by our mass slaughter of animals. Just people are just disconnected. Who knows if this guy thinks that this is actually good for the planet. Maybe he's a true believer. Maybe he's a true believer. Or maybe he's just smart enough to know that if you can get the whole world eating nothing but processed foods and completely disconnected from the ability to make their own foods, that in two generations, it's very, very easy to brainwash these people uh, into almost anything, right? In two generations, you could have nobody left that understands real animal agriculture. You could have nobody left that remembers how to actually feed themselves, how to actually be, be not sterile, right? You can get like a children of men situation in a couple generations with just some simple propaganda. Glamour magazine, kids vegan food. What is this? Let these two kids school you on veganism. Crazy. Cosmo magazine. Everything you need to know about going vegan. Want to make like Beyonce and give up meat and more? And go vegan. So, I mean, we're seeing this push. It's, it's trending. It's trending, guys. It's crazy. I mean, it's just the classic hijacking of culture and they're using it against the people hmm all right let's see what's going on over here in the chat what's up everybody lots of banter in the chat right now um so yeah guys the election special what an interesting day i didn't even realize it but i have to be stopped in order to get America back. We gotta take America back from the meat eaters, said uh, said that guy who put me in his video. That was funny. But I'm gonna wrap this up, guys. I've been streaming for a little while. Had to jump on here today and watch that beautiful piece of art from Carbo Raider. Where did it go? Vegan Carbo Raider. He might, maybe, I wonder if he's streaming me right now. Let's see, he might be streaming me. What if I was streaming, and he was streaming me, and I was streaming him? I feel like we'd be in some, like, crazy time warp. Stop this evil. And it was a video basically all about Donald Trump, but he put me on the cover. <laughs> so I'm, I'm orange man bad now. Hashtag bald man bad, guys. Hashtag beard man bad. Beard man bad. So, yeah, Friday. Going to be talking to uh, Ask Yourself and Vegan Gains. Jay Dyer and I will be doing a debate on ethics. Vegan ethics. Atheism versus theism. Whoa. On Vegan Gains channel. He's going to try, he's going to, try to convert us to, his, uh, to the vegan diet. Back to a vegan diet. <laughs> convert me back. That'll be funny. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, what else is going on? We're doing the Keto and Carnivore Collective. We just started on Sunday. The next Keto and Carnivore Collective is going to be... Let me check my calendar. I'm not sure if it's decided yet. It's either going to be the first or second week of December. We probably will end up doing it the first week of December. We're not going to wait till the end of December. We've got to do it before Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is on my calendar. That's funny. Kwanzaa's on my iCal. Um, yeah, so Vegan Gains Debate, Friday. Um, 
Next month's Keto Collective, we've already had a few requests for a Keto Collective in December. We actually we considered taking it off, and then we said we'll push it back a little bit, but we'll probably end up doing it the first week of December. If you're interested in that, that'll be fun. But um, yeah, guys, you got to make America steak again, right? America's been made many things lately, made quite confused lately on the internet. Make sure also, make sure everybody to watch just get your daily dose of vitamin television, vitamin TV. Um, really make sure that television and TV is the main informant of your worldview and what you believe. Uh, TV is there as – it's not just entertainment. I mean, that, it's, a, it's a service, right? I mean, these people are just trying to help you to know how to live. And I think it's really, really important that we pay attention to what – we're told and we do as we're told by the television. So make sure to, you know, tune into your local TV and uh, behave in the way that they present. You know, I mean, if you're a father, you're supposed to be a deadbeat dad, um, just concerned with looking cool. If you're a, um, a kid, you're supposed to be totally confused about your, having genitalia, major body dysmorphia, probably should cut your cock off if you're a man. Um you know, just just make sure to to really really dive deep into um, uh, just allowing television to inform every single part of your personality uh, on how it's supposed to appear. Because it's not really about being a real person, being connected to God, being connected to eternity, being connected to the truth. It's not about believing in the truth. What's really important is that people think you're cool or acceptable or um, you know, just whatever it is, whatever small community you're trying to impress and idolize, make sure to just pretend and be like them. Uh, and TV will help you to do that. Um, so this has been a nice little stream, guys. Um, what else? I'm seeing some funny comments here in the, uh, in the chat. But anyways, we got to make America steak again, guys. This has been a fun election special. Uh, remember, hashtag bald man bad, hashtag beard man bad, hashtag eat meat bad. Um, use those hashtags and you can be really, really powerful activists. Also, um, you know, take a lot of selfies and put them on Instagram and hashtag activism because that's what activism is. Take, wear, wearing cute outfits, uh, getting naked and smearing paint on yourself and screaming in the streets and acting like an animal and dehumanizing yourself. That's how we can be activists. And uh, just like Plant Based News says, that's how we can be rebels. You could be a rebel by doing exactly what Bill Gates, Richard Branson, Monsanto, Cargill, Bayer Pharmaceutical, Monsanto. That's how you're a rebel. You do exactly what they want you to do by buying their products, by shopping for your identity, by purchasing your identity so that you can feign it outwardly rather than experience it inwardly, right? Because remember, it's so much more important that people think you're a certain way than what you really are. So report back to your local television uh, and they will complete the message that I was just relaying to you and tell you how to be dehumanized, how to believe in all sorts of nonsense, and how to be enlightened by not eating meat and by starving your children of vital nutrition, by avoiding all fat-soluble vitamins and thinking fat and cholesterol are bad. I'm kidding, guys. We've got to make America steak again. Cook America a steak. We need to heal this country by making a steak cutting it up, and eating it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll see you guys soon. I'll probably post another video tomorrow. I might do a stream uh, this week with another surprise guest, but I'm not so sure. I've been streaming a lot lately. I've been streaming too much lately. And I got, I'm going to do a stream on Friday because we'll be debating. Jay and I will be debating Ask Yourself, Isaac, and uh, uh, Vegan Gains. So that'll be fun. 1 o'clock Eastern on Friday. You'll see that one. So peace out, guys. We'll see you next time.
that we've got to play this. Just for, for the healing of the nation, for the healing of this country, uh, I offer you a spiritual song. To all the vegans, to all you carnists, to all you meat tarts, we need healing. And if we could just come together and sing one common song, the rainbow around the moon, maybe that healing can happen. Good night and good luck. Someone said I play this to my wife or I sing this to my wife to bug her. Yeah, my wife gets really mad if I sing this. <laughs> you sing that song. Dude, it gets stuck in your freaking head forever. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it gets stuck in your freaking mind forever. Somebody told me they're like they told me to check out uh they're like, go to Frank Dufato's video. You commented on people are talking a bunch of shit. But it's just the same old vegans. Isn't that funny? Let's uh, let's pull up the uh Put it over here. It's always the same accounts that are banned from my channel that are commenting. They follow me around to other people's channels. Where'd that, where'd that comment? Okay. And it's just <laughs> it's vegan. It's the same one. YouTube user. This guy's obsessed with me. Probably just a total pussy. <laughs> Blocks everyone from his channel. I just blocked the stalkers, dude. How funny is that? All right. Anyways, guys. Um... We really need to heal. There's so much division. There's so much division right now in the world. There's so much division between these diets that we need to come together. So, um, you know, seeing this song together in honor of the election, right? Bringing America together to make America stake again. Um, let's get back to our, uh, our regularly scheduled program and let's sing this beautiful hymn of freedom. There's a rainbow the best part. <laughs> yeah, that one.
All right. Peace, Reflections. You're...